Good day. How's it bums old bloke? Here you go. Well, today we got a pomegranate we're going to work on. Um, this is one that had a bit of a tough time. I let. It's got a broken branch here as well. Maybe a bird or something snapped it. Maybe me. Probably me. But anyway, uh, what's going on here is this one I let overgrow with a heap of wire on it and a cutting. I had to cut a lot of the branching off, which was not that long ago that I did it. And now it needs to be trimmed back again. Um, normally deciduous trees in autumn are starting to shut down. So as a general rule, I would start to think twice about cutting back in um, a deciduous tree now in early autumn. The reason that I'm cutting this one back is I probably only gave this hard cut back two months ago at most and this is all new growth and it's still pushing flat out. So what I'll do now is I'll get in there, clean it up, keep the branches that I want. If there's any branches that I want to fatten up on the trunk anywhere, I'll leave them to get long and fatten up. I won't cut them back. But if there's places that I want to start getting divisions, I'll cut it back to short little shoots because I believe because I gave it such a hard cut back so late, as in pretty late summer, that it's still going to reshoot again. So I can decently expect another push of growth, which means I get another lot of growth that I can keep before the winter hits. Um, like I say, if you haven't cut it back late, or depending on the type of tree, think twice about cutting something back this late. But I'm pretty confident, and pomegranates are actually one of the last deciduous trees that we have to shut down here in South Australia. Um, they, they sort of hold on to their leaves almost through until early winter. Um, so anyway, I can get away with this, I know that. Just, you know, don't take this as something that you always do. It depends on your climate, on the type of tree, and how long ago you cut it back. If you've or how fine you've cut it back. If you've been continuously cutting it back every two months and you've done three cutbacks, like some of my trees out on the benches, they definitely don't need another cutback before um, winter hits. I'm just going to leave them. They're fine. Most of them I'm going to leave now. In fact, nearly all of them. Just this one here and then maybe some of my olives I'll probably trim back. Um, and I think my crepe myrtles are finished. I'm not going to cut them back anymore. So anyway, just don't take this as what you have to do because this is a very special case as far as how I've treated it in the past and the type of tree it is. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, enough with that serious talk. Let's have some fun with some tongue. Bloody beauty. Mm. You know, originally I bought this because it was cheap. But I think I'm actually starting to like it. Just a little bit. Just a little. Alright, let's get into this tree. I'll bring you guys up a bit closer. Um, while I work on it. Now I've got you guys plugged into chargers and I've got a power cord hanging off you for the light and all sorts of stuff going on here so just you know keep that in mind when you judge me on my camera work. Pretty hard. Okay guys so should we pull it out the tub? I think we could try. We could try pulling it out the tub. Doesn't look like it, but this thing's actually getting a decent base on it. To get them out of a tub is a good trick. You just give them a tap on the top. So you lift it up, tap it on top, 
and you can see the roots there. I'm just going to do that while I trim it, just so you guys can hopefully see the base and get a bit more perspective on it. Because it's, you know, not fair on you guys if you have to sit there and can't see the base, because that's, you know, quite often the best part of the tree. So I'll put it on the turntable carefully. I won't play around with the roots at all. I just want to keep it like that so you guys can see it. Now, being as the last few videos are pretty short, I'm going to keep you guys live for this one. So basically, all I'm doing, another, the beer is too far away. Another thing about this tree too is that because I did cut it back so hard because it had, one it had powdery and scale, um, sooty mould all over it, it's still got remnants of that but the infestation's gone I think, it has got slugs still but because I did cut it back so hard it's got Millions of little shoots, well not millions, but you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of baby shoots have just shot out on the trunk everywhere. So it's going to need a lot of cleaning up on this little stuff. And that's also another good reason as to why I'm working on this one now. Because if I can clear up all this little baby stuff everywhere, it'll push more growth into branches that I want to keep. And if you go back to this video and have a look. I should really start some playlists. I'm, I'm thinking about getting some playlists going for you guys so it's easy if you guys keep an eye on the trees and their progress. Um, so it's going to be a bit of work for me to do that, but I'm willing to do it. It's alright. Um, you'll see how hard I cut it back and how there's not too many branching. So these low branches down here, so like now that I've got rid of all the fairy stuff, and I've got some more main ones to keep. I'm not going to be cutting them back. I'm going to let them grow. So it's going to look a little bit crazy um, after today's working. But, you know, it all stems from the fact that I had to cut it back hard because I let it let the wire bite in so far that there was no resurrecting the branches. And it also got an infestation because it was so overgrown and compact with growth for so long that no air was getting in there and then it got disease. So that's what happens. Okay. It's been reasonably cool summer here, but even though it's been cool, we have not had any real um, rain to speak of, apart from that Australia Day video where we got some rain. We've actually had no rain here at all um, since October, I think. So November we went without rain, December no rain, January long weekend obviously we had rain, a million inch. And a few mil the week after, so that was, you know, maybe the 3rd or 4th of February. We have not had a drop since, so it's been pretty dismal here for rain. But right now it's just trying to spit, but there's not much forecast, like 2 mil maybe. I doubt we'll even get that. Normally when they forecast 2 mil, we're lucky to get one drop. But yeah, she's been pretty... Um, been pretty dry, so you know, cranking the old water bill at the moment, keeping everything going, which is not ideal. But what do you do? Now, these branches are really soft and prone to breaking at the moment. Now, are you live or not? No, it's dead. There's a scale on there, which is part of this, well, main problem to the sooty mould. And if you've got ants, if you see ants running up the tree, 
you've probably got the sooty mould. So this got sooty mould because I let it overgrow to the point where there was no light getting in and scale love that. Okay, I'm only going to do a pretty rough prune. I can come in here later and, um, you know, when I, when I say later, I mean in winter when it goes dormant and really get into it. But I do want to try and make sure that I leave some branches to go long and fatten up a bit before it goes into dormancy so that one, it should keep it over winter during frost and stuff, it should be able to keep them because they should be fat enough. Sometimes if your branching is still too fine and too small. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, if your branching is too fine and it gets cold, it can die back. Or if it hasn't hardened off enough, it's not really then going to be hardy towards um, winter cold. Now you'll notice too, as I'm getting up near the top here, I'm actually cutting things back to just a short shoot because up the top, you know, these trees don't have a problem uh, pushing nice strong growth at the top, so you don't need to worry about letting it grow long to help fatten it up. Um, we're more worried right now about trying to fatten up the bottom branching and the top is just to keep some sort of shape about it and not let it to overgrow itself and then we have to cut it back too hard because if you let it all grow too long and fat up here we'll have to do some real hard cutbacks and we don't want to do that, we want to try and start developing the top now so develop the top while we're letting the bottom fatten up so we don't have to cut it all off and lose it all later so that way it gives us a bit of a head start So. As a general rule, unless you've got an azalea or something that's um, basally dominant, if you've got something apically dominant like this, or most deciduous trees, um, you know, I'm not going to go and list them all off because one, I don't know them, and two, you know, I could be here for hours, and generally I just don't know which trees they are. <laughs> But the trees that I keep, I have a general idea. But getting back to that, just, you know, tops in general, apically dominant tree, keep them cut back pretty hard. They ramify and fatten up enough on their own. You don't need to worry about trying to grow long branches to fatten up the top. The bottom, definitely you want to keep stuff like this on to try and fatten up this side bottom branching and I'll definitely be leaving that on until um, at least winter and if it's still not fat enough in coming into winter I'm going to be then leaving this to grow next spring as well um, but we'll see how we go so we're just still chopping back okay this branch here is actually one of the side sort of branches here so we're going to let that one grow as well. You can see how that one's shot out super strong. We're going to let all this stuff grow and all this stuff grow. So we're actually nearly done. Um, just clean up some more branches on the inside. So this is a pomegranate in an early stage of development, especially now that I've lost most of the growth that I did have because I stuffed up by neglecting the tree it's my own fault not the tree's fault i was the one that neglected it and let wire cut in and let it overgrow for i think nearly two years without working on it, it was my fault now i have to pay the price and go back to square one so sometimes it doesn't pay to just you know wire a tree and just then leave it leave it and forget about it um, it never pays. If you're ever going to forget about a tree because you're having a hard time in life or you're busy, you know, go through some sort of turmoil, 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 yeah, turmoil. If you go through some sort of hardship, whatever, and you can't get to your trees, at the very least, take your wire off. 
If you're going to do nothing else, get your wire off so you can at least keep the fatness of the branches. I didn't even take wire off of this tree. Um, I was in the middle of moving house and trying to set up some sort of a you know garden and trees around the house and you know a bit lazy at times um, and that's what happened to this tree the wire bit in and I had to cut it all back off so as you can see there is a bit of a trunk in there inside branch I don't want to keep so you can see there is a bit of a trunk in there a little bit hard to see I've cleaned up most of the branching like I say we can get back in there in winter and give it a real good clean but we just want to get rid of the general growth on these little branches so that it keeps light onto the inside so the inside that's still growing out doesn't die and so that the bottom branches push harder and get stronger so this is like a secondary trunk almost and I want these to get a lot stronger um, because this top here is already quite strong so we want this secondary trunk to get really strong and it is it's growing really well and there's also a good back branch here and some here which we want to get strong so that's probably about it for that tree um, for today it's got some crazy roots on it that's all right you can see this old don't know if I can get it out oh. This is like one of those on one of those pin boards where you hang stuff on. I use that. Looks like I screwed it into the trunk as an old tie down point for the main, maybe to bend the main leader back a bit. Um, so obviously that was planned to be the front, and it probably still will be because the other side's quite boring. It looks like a back. This looks like a pretty interesting sort of a front. That, maybe that one big root there might have to go, but anyway, we'll sort that out later. For now, we're done. This can grow, that can grow, the back one can grow. The top's been reduced, and we're good to go. So all we can do now is sit back. I'll give you a spin, a little spin right now. No point having to close up this tree's not worth a close up but it's getting there it's coming back sorry about your feelings mate it's not your fault it's my fault cheers thanks for watching Aussie bonsai bloke please like share subscribe cheers guys for all your comments love reading all your comments keep commenting keep sending in pictures of your trees <coughs> I'll collect the pictures for your trees and do viewers picks every now and then and also um, if I do miss your picture I'm really sorry sometimes I look at a picture and then I forget and didn't save it so send them in again or send some different ones in and eventually you'll get some pics up but in general you send me a pic I'll put it on a video cheers I'll leave my email in the description and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Cheers.